Imagine being able to see which genes are turned on inside a living cell. Not with guesswork or complex calculations, but with light, colour or even glow-in-the-dark effects. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, it's very real and it's all thanks to something called a reporter gene. Whether you're studying cancer cells, developing embryos, receptor mechanisms, drug actions or designing new drugs or gene therapies, Reporter genes help scientists track what's happening in real time. They're like the GPS trackers of molecular biology, helping us understand where genes are active and how they respond to changes in cell activity. A reporter gene is a piece of DNA, but it's a special piece of DNA that is attached to another segment of DNA known as a promoter. The promoter controls when, where and how strongly the reporter gene is expressed. When a transcription factor that binds to the promoter is present, it stimulates transcription of the reporter gene into messenger RNA. That occurs in the cell's nucleus. The messenger RNA can then enter the cell cytoplasm, where ribosomes translate it into the reporter protein. The amount of protein expressed is therefore a direct measure of the activity of the promoter. A reporter gene has key features. First, it must be easily detectable, meaning that the gene product must produce a signal that can be measured. The gene should not normally be expressed in the host cell to keep background signal minimal and maximise resolution. The protein should also be stable and non-toxic so that it doesn't interfere with cell function. The reporter gene and promoter are usually prepared in the lab as a combined construct, which is then inserted into cells. The methods used with mammalian cells include chemical transfection with something like lipofectin or electrical transfection using electroporation to reversibly permeabilise cell membranes. DNA constructs can also be inserted using viral vectors. Plant cells and embryos are more robust so can withstand harsher physical methods such as microinjection into the nucleus or biolistics also known as a gene gun where DNA coated particles are shot into the cell. Reporter genes can also be used on their own to monitor the activity of a promoter present naturally in the genome. To do this, the reporter gene is inserted directly next to an existing promoter or within an existing gene. It is achieved using gene editing techniques like CRISPR, where CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Here are some of the most commonly used reporter genes. Green fluorescent protein, or GFP, fluoresces green when exposed to UV light. It is widely used for tagging proteins in living cells. It has also been engineered to act as a dynamic sensor of various signals. GFP-based sensors can report on a wide range of biological processes in living cells such as iron concentrations, pH, protein interactions and enzyme activities. Reporter genes are also available for other fluorescent proteins that emit light at different wavelengths, for example, red fluorescent protein and M-cherry. Luciferase is found in many organisms, such as fireflies, sea pansies, jellyfish, some crustaceans and fungi. It emits light in the presence of luciferin and that is responsible for the beautiful bioluminescence displayed by these species. Luciferase is a highly sensitive reporter. Beta galactosidase extracted from bacteria turns chromogenic substrates blue. Cells expressing the enzyme look normal 
until a substrate like X-gal is added. Beta-galactosidase cleaves X-gal into galactose and a blue-coloured dye. This turns cells containing the enzyme blue, while cells lacking beta-galactosidase remain colourless. The depth of the blue colour indicates the level of gene expression. It's a stable reporter and easy to detect without fancy, expensive equipment. On the other hand, it's not suitable for live cell imaging or tracking dynamic gene expression because the cells need to be lysed or fixed for most assays. Let's finish with an example of how a reporter gene might be used in pharmacology or drug discovery. A cell line is transfected with a DNA plasmid engineered to contain the GFP gene and a cyclic AMP responsive promoter such as the Cree cyclic AMP response element. It's designed so that cyclic AMP signaling to Cree drives the expression of GFP. The cells also express a G-protein coupled receptor that couples to the GS protein, as well as the enzymes adenylyl cyclase and protein kinase A. In other words, everything necessary for cyclic AMP signaling. Treating the cells with an agonist of the receptor causes activation of GS, followed by adenyl cyclase and increased synthesis of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP in turn activates protein kinase A, which has many targets in a cell, including the Cree binding protein CREB. Upon activation, CREB translocates to the nucleus where it binds to Cree and promotes transcription of the GFP gene, resulting in the production of green fluorescent protein. The fluorescence signal detected by a photometer gives a direct readout of the activity of the G-protein coupled receptor.